Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I have my Ryzen 5 1600 booted up and ready to go to test out its overclocking ability, so stay tuned. Okay, before we jump into the settings of my Ryzen 5 1600 overclock, I do wanna point out something that's very, very important, and that is that I stand by my statement that the 1600 is a better value for the consumer than is the 1600X for a couple different reasons. First off, the stock cooling solution on the Ryzen 5 1600 is actually fairly decent. The Spire cooler is nothing excessively great, but it is a fairly good cooler, especially considering it is a stock cooler. And to the end of the stock cooler, I will be running a separate video that I use the stock cooler to overclock the 1600 to see how it compares to my aftermarket cooling solution, which brings me to my next point. My cooling solution for this 65 watt TDP part is actually a Corsair H100 IV2. And yes, I fully understand that is an overkill solution for this chip. However, I will point out that it does do a great job of keeping the chip cool. And the interesting thing that you'll see in a bit is that I didn't have to reach into the higher voltages to really hit the almost 4.0 gigahertz that I was sort of seeking after. So without any further ado, let's just go ahead and hop into the settings for my Ryzen 5 1600 overclock. Okay, so I want to run through the back end settings of how I am have my uh, Asus Prime uh, X370 Pro motherboard set up for this particular processor. Now I do want to point out, my RAM is currently only running at 2400 megahertz. It is Corsair Vengeance uh, LPX 3000 megahertz, but I haven't been able to get it, at least with the this current UEFI, I have not been able to get it stable at 2933. So I'm just running it at 2400 for the moment. Also I wanna point out, I'm running BIOS version 0515, and that's because the 06 whatever, I think it's 0605 um, or 0604, whatever it is, sort of broke a little bit of my RAM compatibility, even in my 1800X, uh, because they, they switched some things around that led to RAM not being able to run at quite as high a speed. So I did go back to the 0515 version, which I was happy with to begin with. So if we hop into the settings of the, or the advanced settings rather, and go to our AI tweaker, I have the DOCP profile set to the DDR4-3000. Again, my RAM is 2400. My CPU core ratio is 39.5, giving me a core frequency of 3950 megahertz. Of course, once you're actually in uh, the, the operating system, the base clock reported will be something like 99.9 .9 or 99.8. So it doesn't actually come out to a perfect 3950 megahertz. It comes out more like a 3994 or a 3945 uh, megahertz instead of the 3950, but it's roughly that. Uh, the DRAM timings are all, com the DRAM time, the DRAM timings are all completely uh, set by the DOCP. I did not key those in at all. That just automatically pulled those. And if I go down here, my manual core voltage is 1.4. And of course, once you're actually running the computer, it, w it will fluctuate a little above here and there and a little below, but roughly 1.4 volts. Okay, so as you can see, we have the Ryzen 5 1600. Six core, 12 threads. All 12 threads are fully maxed. Right now we are running at 58 degrees on our core. And, I, and I've seen that get as high as about 64-ish before it completely stabilizes. So it may climb while I'm talking here. But most importantly here, and I'll try to sort of zoom in on this part. But you can see we have a V core of just over 1.4. And that is, um, in, in my opinion, a very good or very, very safe voltage for this processor to be getting 3.94, if you look down here, 3.94 uh, gigahertz uh, on the processor at just over 1.4 volts. I believe that is a very, very good result. Okay, and now that we sort of have the validation done of running Prime95, and by the way, it also passes Intel burn test on a 10-pass run um, as just a sort of quick and dirty way of validating uh, the overclock, I also just want to pull up Cinebench here real quick and just out of curiosity, see where it steps in and what it scores on our Cinebench run.
Okay, so with our one Cinebench pass here, we got a multi-threaded score of 1292, which you can just see up there. And we were also able to get a single-threaded performance score of 159. So pretty solid for a processor that costs just $220 plus tax. As always, guys, if you like my content and want to see more, especially in the overclocking, the 1600, and sort of seeing how it fares compared to other processors, give me a like down below. Also, share, subscribe. All those things are super helpful to the channel. You can comment down below as well and tell me what you thought. You can follow me on Instagram and on Twitter at Hoodro Hardware. They are the same for your convenience. And as always, we'll let YouTube queue up a couple more videos from my channel for you to watch. I'm Shane with Hoodro Hardware, and I will see you guys in the next video.